In episode three of the Budget Makerspace project, we're gonna discuss how you can get a computer for free or very, very cheap to add 3D modeling capability and slicing to your Makerspace to run your 3D printer. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. And firstly, I do apologize for taking a little bit longer to get this episode out in our under $500 Makerspace project, where the idea is to create a Makerspace for the same price or cheaper than an Xbox One X gaming console. That is 500 bucks to buy basically everything you need. And I've included a computer in that budget. Now you might be thinking, you know, how can you get a computer for even like on its own for under $500? And yes, if you're expecting a PC to run the latest gaming titles, then uh, stop watching here because you're not going to get that. But I'm gonna show you my techniques for getting cheap or free computer hardware that's perfectly capable of running slices for your 3D printers and software like cloud-based 3D modeling software or even local software for editing STL files and 3D modeling. So I'm gonna start with the computer side of things and then talk about free software that you should install to get up and running in your makerspace. So I've got timestamps below if you're interested in just skipping straight to the software part. By all means, if you already have a computer, you don't need to find one, so you can just skip straight to that. But if you are after a computer, I'm gonna share with you how I got this entire system behind me for zilch, completely free. So let me share with you my philosophy for getting cheap or free computer hardware. You see, you need to find someone who didn't pay for it. Now I'm not saying go buy stolen goods. No, stop. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is you want to target companies who have hardware that is now obsolete and they're trying to get rid of. Now in Australia, we have the end of financial year, which is the end of June, start of July of the year. And companies usually spend this, use this time to roll over old computer and old technology in their office. So this is the perfect time of year to be on the lookout for hardware that's now being deemed obsolete. It's now being deemed uh, depreciated to the point where the company is worth nothing to the company for tax purposes even, and they're just trying to get rid of it. Which is, I think, how I got this system. So behind me, I have a Think Center, which has a Core i5 2400 in it. It has a four gig stick of RAM, some random graphics card, I have no idea. It's like a 512 megabyte graphics card and a 250 gig uh, hard drive, traditional hard drive, no SSDs here. It had uh, Windows 7 loaded on it and um, I stuck Windows 10 on it and it seems to run perfectly fine. In fact, it booted straight into Windows 7 with a password obviously um, when I found it. So where did I find it? Well, I have a local tip and we have an e-waste disposal uh, dumpster. So I was chucking away old e-waste and someone had just thrown all these PCs in. Yes, there was multiple PCs in the e-waste dumpster. I just picked it out. Now, whether or not that's okay with the tip in question, I'm not sure, but that's how I got this computer and I was able to put Windows 10 on it with no problems. So that's the first tip. Look at your local e-waste disposals and see if they have computers that they've either salvaged and they're selling for really, really cheap or that someone's just chucked in and you might be able to pull out, and if you can't pull out a working system, you might be able to pull out some, some RAM, working motherboard, maybe a good processor, and slowly build up something like that. Actually, a few years ago, I did something similar with my dumpster PC build, and I found the parts for that through council throwouts. Now, council throwouts, at least in Australia, are a uh, timed event where the council will say, look, if you have rubbish, put it out in the curb and we'll come collect it and take it uh, to uh, resource processing or the tip, depending on how valuable it is. So council throwouts are a very good time for people to dispose of things, but also this, uh, even though again, it's not strictly legal, once you put it on the curb, it's owned by the council, it is a good time to keep an eye out for maybe things that you might want to get, which is how the monitor I have here came to be. Um, a lot of people throw away these old non-widescreen non LCD monitors. And even if they're not thrown away, they're usually quite cheap and easy to get. And I actually prefer this aspect ratio, I'll be honest, for 3D modeling and stuff like that. So that's how this came to be. And the keyboard and mouse are just ancient relics. I have no idea who bought them or where they came from. They might've been my parents for all I know. They're terrible, just they used to come with computers from Dell, but they work. And that's how the whole system was put together. 
for no money. Other resources you might want to tap for a computer are your friends. For example, they may be upgrading themselves and may have something old they want to give you for free or cheap. Or maybe a permanent loan is also a good op good way to approach it. Like they don't, you don't own it. They're just giving it to you on a non, non timed basis till they might want it back in future. Usually they never want it back or even a uh, business or family friend who again, may be upgrading the systems in their office. They need to get rid of old, old hardware. You don't need to go as far back as a CRT monitor or anything like that. By all means, you can get these LCDs very, very easily, even if you have to pay maybe $10 for them. Websites I look at for used hardware in Australia are Gumtree. Gumtree is massive here, and now I think it's expanded to other countries. Or if you're in America, obviously Craigslist would be where you'd go for cheap hardware. But I do believe if you look hard enough and take your time and bide your time, you can get free hardware. Just got to take some time to find it. And I know that's not going to be applicable to everyone in every situation, but that's how I put this system together where I am here in Australia. And again, you want to try to find hardware being sold by people who didn't have to pay their own hard earned cash for it because that endows a sense of ownership if they've done that. So often on Gumtree, for example, I'll find people selling old graphics cards for like $10 less than they were worth like three or four years ago. Um, Moore's law is very, very real and does affect the price of computer hardware very quickly. So I looked on eBay, for example, for this exact system, this, uh, this thing centered with the i5-2400 and you can get them for $130 Australian or even as low as $100 Australian uh, with the hard drive and Windows 7 ready to go. And you can currently upgrade Windows 7 to Windows 10 for free if you uh, follow the link in the description. I'm not sure how long it's going to last but it did work perfectly fine for this system. So it even had the code on the side for Windows 7, it's running Windows 10, no problem. But what if you want to run a different OS? Well, I have played around a little bit with Ubuntu, specifically Budgie. Um, I quite like that distro, it looks nice, and I've installed that on a laptop. Now let me talk a little bit about laptops. Uh, Moore's Law has not been kind to laptops. If you're looking for secondhand hardware or free hardware, go for a desktop, an old Core 2 Duo will probably be better than an old laptop. For example, what I have here is an Asus EPC, and it's not even that old. I believe the, it was purchased in 2012. Um, this is completely and utterly worthless. It was gutless when it came out, and now it's just absolute junk, sadly. So this doesn't even run Windows 10 properly. I can't get any of the apps to load properly. It's slow as hell. Um, yeah, don't go for a laptop. If you're gonna buy secondhand hardware, go for a desktop because you can always upgrade the components inside. And um, often in iterations and improvements over the years have been focused on power and efficiency rather than, um, uh, yeah, just dumbing down and making things gutless for the sheer practicality of making them run a few hours on a battery. So that's where I'm going to leave the PC discussion. My main point is a lot of the apps I'm going to talk about next will run fine on a core duo system. No problems, four gigs of RAM is perfectly fine. Basically get what you can get and you'll probably be fine using it for your makerspace. Upgrade it as you can, but I'm not gonna get into a PC master race debate about the best PC combination or even like AMD versus Nvidia. That's not what this is about. This is about getting a cheap PC for your budget makerspace. We only have 500 bucks total, remember? So this is what I've got. I got it for free, but I'm gonna put it into the budget as $130 Australian, which is about 100 bucks US. So let's move on to software. Okay, software for our budget makerspace. Well, long other days of having to pay pretty much any money for powerful software for your 3D printing experience. Like literally in the last four or five years, the whole playing field has changed. Previously, you'd have to spend thousands of dollars on CAD software. Now you can spend silch. So for my 3D modeling suite, I've gone with, as if you follow this channel, you'd expect, Fusion 360. I'm very happy with Fusion 360. It's extremely powerful and you can actually run their cloud-based Fusion 360 version now if you do get a very gutless PC, but this thing runs it fine and you can do all sorts of parametric modeling, push-pull modeling. You can import meshes. It's extremely, extremely powerful and it's free for students, uh, educators, um, hobbyists and startups like myself. So you can get that completely for free. If it's a bit too advanced for you, check out Tinkercad that runs through the WebGL interface in any browser. It'll run on any operating system, works fantastic. And also check out Vectory if you haven't already seen that. I'm not, uh, haven't gone into it too much, but it's very powerful for very complicated modeling. And again, free on the cloud and will run on pretty much any system. And of course, the big daddy of all free open source 3D modeling software is Blender. Now, personally, 
I can't use Blender, it's a bit too foreign to me, but I am trying out a bit of software called B for Artist, which is like supposedly Blender with an easier to use or learn uh, user interface. I'll get back to you on how well that works. So a lot of these programs will work in, uh, in Windows, in Linux, Ubuntu, or um, uh, Mac. Not all of them will. I mean, Fusion 360 is unfortunately, I think Windows and Mac only. Uh, definitely, definitely doesn't work on Linux. Now, slices. You have your pick of slices for free these days. You don't have to spend any money for a powerful slicer. I personally like Idea Maker, for example. It's produced by the same team that makes the Raise 3D printers, and it has uh, customizable uh, manual supports. You can put any printer parameters into it you like. You can't do deltas, unfortunately. No round uh, circular print volumes, only, only Cartesian style, but it's very powerful. Prusa control is great. Uh, it works very well for the Prusa 3D printers. And then there's the, the Slicer Prusa Slicer Edition, Slicer Prusa Edition, which again is very powerful. Cura, again, massive fan base around Cura. Huge amount of features in the latest version. And one worth mentioning as well is Ice SL. It's a very unknown slicer I've been playing around with lately and it is actually adaptive. You can do adaptive layer heights and adaptive infill. Check, you look out for more of that on this channel. I'm playing around with it and I'm amazed with the power that it, um, it actually has for a free bit of software. And also there's like the, uh, the ICE SL Forge or whatever it's called where it's like a modeling environment as well. Um, speaking of that, it's like a code based environment. And if you like to model, the idea of modeling with code interests you, check out OpenSCAD free. And one bit of software that I highly recommend you check out is Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is very powerful for editing your STL files for 3D printing. I've talked about it so many times on the channel before. I have a whole playlist on Mesh Mixer tutorials. I love Mesh Mixer. It runs perfectly fine on Windows. Um, and I think there's a Mac version as well. And you can hack it to work on Linux, but you will have a bit of a tough time. But you definitely need to check out Mesh Mixer if you want to take 3D printing and 3D model manipulation seriously. There's obviously loads more software I could talk about, but I think that's more than enough to get started. I would choose a good slicer from the list I've mentioned for free, a good modeling program for free. I'm gonna use Fusion 360 in my case, but you could use Tinkercad again if it's easier for you. And you're gonna need a good mesh manipulation bit of software. Again, Mesh Mixer is my go-to for this. And if you do have a few bucks to spare, a lot of these programs will take tips. And I do, do recommend tipping the software that you, that you end up going with because these guys slave night and day to produce this free software for us and it's absolutely incredible how powerful these bits of free free software are like it's as someone who studies SolderWorks and used to use a ten thousand dollar bit of bit of software what some of these things are doing for free absolutely blows my mind so that concludes this third episode on the pc and software for our budget makerspace I'm gonna stick a link in the description for the page on the Makers Muse website. It's gonna go through all the software I've mentioned in detail with links and how you can learn more about it because it's definitely worth checking out some of those bits of programs. Even if you're not building a makerspace, uh, you will find that link, that list useful. And as many of you know, or you might have noticed in the background, um, I'm moving and a lot of this stuff is getting rearranged as in boxes, moving very, very shortly. So the next episode in the Budget Makerspace project will be setting up your Budget Makerspace, which is coming at a good time because this is all being packed up and moved elsewhere. So I will be actually setting up a new Budget Makerspace for the episode and you can look for it next weekend. And if this is your first time on Makers Muse, I would love to have you subscribe. This channel is all about empowering your creativity with 3D printing. So with that guys, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys, bye. Place satellites into water. Water. He is actually.